Red ear sunfish in the winter time become very active, but the problem with this drought situation that we're having right now, they're a little bit hard to locate. They're not in the places that they normally would be. So what I'm doing is searching for them in places that you would look for them in drought situations. And that's going to be on the river or at the dam. That's the two places. Or at the end of bluffs. Three places, really, that, that are prime spots for red ears in specific. And bluegill. So what I'm going to be using today, and I may mix it up, is two pound test mono loaded up on this 1,000 size Daiwa. Now this is just an old Shakespeare rod. It's a two-piece rod. This rod is probably 25 years old. It will not break, and I'll just keep using it. It's so old that the tilt is bent. Bent at a downward. If I've caught so many fish with it, it's bent at a downward angle a little bit. And I'm going to be using a size 6 hook. That's a light wire, Eagle Claw hook, Aberdeen, and a little bitty split shot, and half a night crawler. And I, the way I hook them is just one time like that. Looks a lot more natural in the water, and I get a lot of bites because of doing that. But yeah, we're going to just go down this river right here and look for eddies and see if we can find some. If we can't, we'll change up what we're doing and location. But that's what I want. They're delicious. Now, the water temperature is 50 one degrees on top this morning 51 but right now we're in seven feet of water so i'm just going to pitch towards those rocks right there now the current is pretty light this morning so i'll be able to fish these spots pretty effective lee now when it comes to big red ears or big bull gills a lot of times i'll use the whole night crawler instead of the half now if we find them that's what i'll do folks because there's some pretty good sized ones here on this river but what i'm doing is just drifting down through here and if i get too fast i'll bump up i'm facing the current and i'm just letting that bait barely tick the bottle but i don't want to do it real quick the water is cold and these fish ain't going to do a thousand yard dash for a bait. They're just not going to do it. So that's how I'm searching for them. These eddies will always hold a few. But the question is, are they going to be big enough? The one I just put in the bucket, well, is barely big enough. I'm looking for fish uh, quite a bit bigger than that. But that's where those uh, shell cracker and big bluegill are is in behind those rocks on the down current side. Um, that's just a little spotted bass, but it don't. There's no telling what could be behind those rocks. Don't we'll let him go. I thought it was a big shell daddy to begin with, and they're just big rocks like you see up there on the bank. That's what I'm fishing basically. They kind of look like those. And those fish should get, like I said, on the down current side of those rocks to, to wait for something to drift by so they can reach out there and get it. <laughs> they don't want to fight the current all the time. Well, he knocked a fire out of it. That's little bitty ones right there because they're not holding on to it. Now that one's got a hold to it. Let's see what we got. There he is. Yeah, that's a that's a better one right here. This feels like a big shell cracker. Y'all see how he took off? Let's see if it is. Yeah, it's a big shell cracker. This is the kind of fish right here. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for right there, folks right there yep 
the bottom composition here we can just li we'll lift him in there now that is a good one right there that's what I'm looking for big shell cracker like that or red ear sunfish that is some delicious eating right there I knew the way he took off that he was a he was a good one that's it right there all right let's put him in the bucket oh I'm going, you got a headache quit 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 you're going in the bucket see look at there that is the size i'm wanting right there oh my what some good eat I, I don't know why I like them. I like them better than I do crappie or even sauger, folks. A lot of people say, what? Better than sauger? Yep. To me, they taste even better than sauger, especially, especially in the wintertime. Um, it's the one fish that I really enjoy eating. I like to eat them all, you know, crappie and all of them, really. But when it comes to bluegill or panfish in general that's my favorite hands down favorite now that fish hit, in around, hit around seven and a half eight feet of water so now being I caught a real good one like that I'm going to focus on that depth of water that's exactly right well here's another fish on here already now that's not what we're wanting though. There's a lot of them out there. A lot of them. But that's good. The plan, boss. The plan, boss. Boy, it's turned off nice right now, folks. I hope it stays this way. Because I can tell what I'm doing a lot better with this small split shot on. If I were to fish with a split shot much bigger, I would stay hung up all the time. So that's uh, the reason I'm using such a small split shot. It don't take you that long to, to get to the bottom. Actually, that current helps it get to the bottom a little bit quicker than what you might think. But... Um, yeah, I can tell, I can really feel some of those rocks down there, and that's a, <laughs> that's a good deal. I can jump them. There he is. Wow. That fish, I tell you what. <laughs> that one right there almost slipped. Us. That's a good one good shell cracker look here folks he almost slipped by oh i can't even talk these are good ones right here um i mean good eating big old things my goodness look at that water dead gone he almost slipped by me is what i'm trying to say it was close they're biting so doggone light. Quit, quit. Put it in the bucket. I'm mounting up some good fish right there. There's no doubt about it. That That's what I come out here to do. This is something right here. This style of fishing right here is so simple and so inexpensive. It is, folks. A little split shot. Two-pound test high-vis vicious line a little bitty eagle claw uh, wire hook size six or you can use i used to use and have used a size eight i mean it don't matter now i switched rods to a ultralight right here this is a sow belly rod six and a half feet still the same setup i broke off a while ago on a rock, not a fish. But, uh, yeah. There's one right there. Oh, y'all see that? 
Oh my, my, he didn't get my worm though. But my worms whittled down a little bit small. Simple, simple, simple. This type of fishing right here, a feller don't have to use big words or anything like that to communicate to, to a fellow angler. Let me put it that way. He can look at him and say, at the end of the day, you know, that was fun. <laughs> it's just that simple. But let's see if there's another one right there. We're going to catch... Hey, look here. Look, 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 look. Look. No, that's a little bitty one. I'm catching a ton of these right here. They're almost big enough to eat. If you was real hungry, you could. But I prefer the bigger ones. Light bites. Golly bum. That fish is pulling. I'm telling you folks, when you hook one, you know it. They are so strong. And there's actually another, another shell cracker right behind him. What I've done right here is I found the mother lobe of shell daddies. And that is a great old good. I might be able to lift him. Let's see. Oh, boy, I don't. It's almost too much. Now, you talking about <laughs> having some fun. I'm having it. A blessing. Once again, I'm going to say that. We all should count our blessings every day. Every day. That's a blessing right there. Uh, me and, uh, hey, me and Mama Sue. No, let me say it like you're supposed to. I forget. Mama Sue and I, okay, are going to eat tonight. So I'm going to show you what, where I found these fish and why I stopped here and started fishing for them. Okay, folks, let's look at this bank right here. Now, I caught most of my fish in between this tree okay and that point that first point that juts out right there now the first thing that we have let me mention the fact that on up is a bluff and that bluff is real deep it falls off pretty well straight off okay this is actually the end of the bluff and a lot of things is going on right here instead of dropping off 14 15 feet of water within just a few feet from the bluff this has a shallower type bank that slopes downward and comes on out several several yards before dropping off in, into the actual 15 16 feet of water okay so you have a rocky shelly sandy bottom here indication of what the bottom looks like here at this place is real simple look up 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 on the bank you can see a lot of sand and scattered rock well the same thing basically is happening out here sand and scattered rock now right here you have a pea gravel composition bottom you have pea gravel on the on the bank well, there's pea gravel mixed up in with this sand and a few big surface rocks. And the difference is these fish should jump up on these areas, these tapering drops like this, and, and that's where they'll ambush and feed for the winter. They're waiting for things to wash down to them. Um, they, they're not going to go real deep anyway. I mean, you, I have caught shellcracker down 20 feet on the hard, hard winters. Where it was real hard, hard winters. But usually, I'm not going to look no deeper than anywhere from 6 to uh, 12 feet deep. You know, I mean, I'm just not. Because that's not, they're not going to go much deeper than that. Let's catch another one right here if we can. 
I was just saying I caught a couple right here to begin with pretty good ones and then that fish hit it he he hit it then he dropped it I believe that's the first one that's done that there's there's a bite right there that fish is moving this way let's, let's get him let's see what we got that's going to be a bluegill right there Let's see if he's big enough to eat. I would think so, wouldn't y'all? He's big as my hand. Let's put him in the bucket. If they're big enough, I'm not throwing them back. Yeah, he's big enough. He's plenty big enough. But there's a lot of difference in the way a, a bluegill fights and a, a shell cracker. There's a big difference. A shell cracker... I don't know why or how physically, but they're stronger. They're, they're just a lot stronger fish. They're just like any other fish. The, the better red ear and bluegill are just in certain places, folks. You just have to, to hunt them out. You just have to find them. These river systems are big and it takes a little time but now you can do this this is something that anybody can do and how fun you can have fun doing it too there he is yes sir oh my oh <laughs> golly this ain't this is a lot of fun folks this is a lot of fun look here if you ain't done any shell cracker fishing in the winter, if you haven't, oh my, I would suggest anybody doing that. Let's see. I had him hooked just exactly right because it ain't nothing but a lot of fun. Ain't a lot of fun. Quit. You don't do that. You, you don't do that. What you do is you get in that bucket right there. Okay? It is. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, I'm enjoying this. Like I said, I, I love this stuff. I mean, I'm enjoying this just as good as catching some big slab crappie. I sure am. This is a simple, simple little technique right here. Walmart night crawlers, folks. And that's all they are to it. Skippy the dude. Oh, Skippy the A. My oh my. What a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Skippy the dude. Oh, Skippy the A. You know, folks, the truth of the matter is, well, I just got to thinking. That is a very simple technique, but that's probably one of the most effective ways that you can catch shell cracker in the winter time. Very simple. Simple is better when it comes to catching these old big fish like this. In the winter time, these big shell cracker and bluegill will school up. It's just a matter of finding them on your river. There are certain places they're going to be. But once you unlock the mystery, well then, hey, you can tear them up. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for in coming out here and enjoying a sport with me, which is the sport of fishing. The best sport that's ever been on this earth. That's ever been, folks. I'm, I'm just going to put it that way. A lot you can learn out here in God's great outdoors. But thank y'all very much. God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for everything. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Hey, man, there's something coming up the river. It's a plane or something. It is a plane! The plane, boss! The plane, boss! And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.